Cognitive dissonance tops our 2024 lead. Let's go back a few months to the time frame after the June 27th presidential debate, but before President Biden dropped out of the race. Democrats were essentially telling the public to ignore what we had all seen and heard from Biden at the debate, the first debate, while also arguing, mind you, that Mr. Trump was not capable of telling the truth. Now, I might have said at the time that that was the most glaring moment of cognitive dissonance in the 2024 race. But then came this last week. Former President Trump and his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, are, are criticizing the news media and Democrats for what they call irresponsible rhetoric that they allege was behind the thankfully unsuccessful assassination attempt against Mr. Trump on Sunday. At the same time that they're doing that, Trump and Vance and their minions continue to spread lies about Haitian migrants eating pets in Springfield, Ohio. Those lies are now disrupting life in that town. So let's start with these ongoing lies and the fact that the Wall Street Journal today confirmed that the Trump campaign actually knew or had been told that the Springfield rumors were false back on September 9th. The Journal reports that Vance's team contacted the city, Springfield, that morning. And here's how Springfield City Manager Brian Heck described the call with the Vance staffer, quote, he asked point blank, are the rumors true of pets being taken and eaten? I told him, no. There was no verifiable evidence or reports to show this was true. I told them these claims were baseless, unquote. Baseless. But Vance's tweet making the allegation stayed up, and the very next day, Former President Trump elevated this lie to 67 million viewers during that second presidential debate. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Dogs, nope. Cats, nope. Pets, nope. Nope, nope, nope. No evidence for any of that. And here we are eight days after that debate, and schools and two colleges in Springfield have been disrupted by bomb threats and shooting threats. We're told by reporters on the ground and people who live there that there's a general sense of fear among residents, and especially among Haitian migrants. The Republican governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, and the Republican mayor of Springfield are, are pleading with Trump and Vance and others, please stop. Those comments are, uh, you know, about eating dogs and things are very hurtful. Um, they're very hurtful for these men and women who work very, very hard. They're obviously very hurtful for, for their children. The statements are wrong. I've said they were wrong. The mayor has said they were wrong. And frankly, they need to stop. And yet, when confronted with the pleas of these Republican officials and just their fellow Americans, and with news of these threats to the people of Springfield, Trump and Vance have expressed, frankly, indifference and a little bit of indignance. All that I've done is surface the complaints of my constituents, people who are suffering because of Kamala Harris's policies. Are we not allowed to talk about these problems because some psychopaths are threatening violence? And now there are bomb threats at schools and kids being evacuated. Why do you still spread no, no, this no. story? The real threat is what's happening at our border. Did you denounce the bomb threats in Springfield, Ohio? Uh, I don't know what happened uh, with the uh, bomb threats. I know that it's been taken over by uh, illegal migrants. So they continue to push these falsehoods about the migrants at the same time they demand that Democrats curb their rhetoric. It's, it, it's really, frankly, quite a sight to behold. Don't lecture Donald Trump about softening his rhetoric after two people tried to kill him. Tell Kamala Harris, tell Joe Biden, tell all of her surrogates who are saying things like Donald Trump needs to be eliminated. They need to cut that crap out or they're going to get somebody hurt. If Senator Vance thinks that Democrats using the word eliminated is bad, he should take a gander at some of the things that his running mate has been saying since he came down that escalator in 2015. So if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. Do you know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. And when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, 
You just see him thrown in, rough. I said, please don't be too nice. I promise Crowd boys, stand back and stand by. We will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. That was just a little sampler. In March 2016, Republican Senator Ted Cruz described the Trump campaign as a campaign that, quote, affirmatively encourages violence, unquote. That's Senator Cruz said that. And as Trump called as president, Democratic politicians and journalists, the enemy of the American people in 2018, Trump superfan Cesar Syak mailed 16 homemade pipe bombs to them including to former President Obama and former Secretary of State Clinton, and yeah, to us here at CNN. As Trump lamented a plot to steal the 2020 election, David DePap broke into the home of then Speaker Nancy Pelosi, brutally attacking Pelosi's husband Paul with a hammer, causing lasting damage to him. DePape testified that he believed that Pelosi was part of a plot to quote, manipulate the country and quote, steal votes from Donald Trump. But Trump, in response, blasted Pelosi and made light of the attack that left these horrible wounds on her husband, Paul. And he did this in front of a laughing crowd. And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. Last year, after Trump posted what he claimed was former President Barack Obama's address, Taylor Taranto, another Trump supporter, was arrested with weapons in Obama's neighborhood. The same suspect was also one of thousands who, as you might recall, stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, wreaking havoc, causing violence, causing serious pain to law enforcement after then-President Trump told his supporters this. We fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Taranto is facing federal charges, plus a civil wrongful death lawsuit, alleging he contributed to the death of D.C. police officer Jeffrey Smith, who was assaulted on January 6, experienced great trauma, and died by suicide days later. Taranto has denied any wrongdoing. Trump, during the second debate this year, bypassed an opportunity to express any remorse for anything he did relating to January 6. Yes, sir. I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. So let's pause it for the sake of argument that some of the Democratic rhetoric and some things said by members of the new, new news media have in some instances gone too far and that everyone should really take a breath and think about the words that we use when describing people that we disagree with. That doesn't mean, even if you believe that, that the previous eight years of dehumanizing and incendiary and yes, violent rhetoric from Mr. Trump has been erased. That's not how the space-time continuum works.